so big news that came out the other day was that the House has decriminalized cannabis. Uh, the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment Expungement Act, the MORE Act as it's called, uh, passed 228 to 164. Um, this is, I mean, this is not like a huge margin. Like it wasn't a total blowout, right? Like you still had a, a fair amount of, uh, uh, of representatives that were against this bill, against the idea of this bill. Uh, and so this is what they were against, right? This is what 164 members of the House of Representatives were against. Uh, they, they're, this decriminalizes marijuana on a federal level. The, all, all the way across, it, it decriminalizes marijuana on a federal level. And not only that, but it expunges the record for people that have been arrested for nonviolent drug offenses, right? So this is a direct hit on the prison industrial complex because now it expunges those people's records. So those people don't have a criminal uh, a record on their, on their uh, you know, permanent government record or whatever, right? That their permanent record gets expunged. Uh, and now, you know, they can get a job, they can re-enter society, they can probably vote again, um, being that their records are being expunged of, of, of this criminal activity. Oh, you know, this bullshit that they throw out there. Uh, not only that, but then 5% uh, it, it, the, uh, of marijuana tax is going to fund relief programs um, to help communities that are affected by the war on drugs which is primarily communities of color, right? That's that's who primarily has been affected by the war on drugs is the communities of color. So this would very much help communities of color do that. Um, it would help people of color uh, basically get, get a better shot at life. Like it doesn't kneecap them because they got a nonviolent drug offense for carrying a plant. Uh, this... This bill had five Republicans that were for it out of the, out of the House. Like five Republicans said they were for it, including Florida's Met Getz, which is astounding that Florida, uh, a Republican in Florida of all, all, all things, got something right. <laughs> and basically he goes on to say like, oh, you know, people don't control the criminal justice system and we should do things to help people and not jail people. Uh, which is very much kind of like a libertarian thing to do. So I wouldn't be surprised if these five Republicans that did uh, vote for this are leaning more towards uh, libertarianism. You know, they kind of lean more towards that end. Six Democrats voted against it. Six Democrats voted against it, which is not a surprise that we do have Democrats that vote against uh, something that would help people. Dem the Democratic Party in and of itself has notoriously been a party of big business, even from the very beginning of it. Thirty-eight members of the House of Representatives just didn't vote. Uh, it was introduced by New Jersey's Jerry Nadler and Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, so I'm very surprised that new, something from New Jersey has actually done something good, right? Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm, I make fun of New Jersey all the time. Uh, but <laughs> so so we we had this sort of tumultuous bill uh, that is essentially a pushback on the uh, the criminal justice system and the prison industrial complex. Um, and there is a uh, there's a little bit more to that as well that I'm going to get to in about a minute. But but now it moves up to the Senate, the GOP controlled Senate. Right. And every time something like this has been proposed in, this, in, in anything that's been GOP controlled, it gets killed. And you have someone like Mitch McConnell, who is still in the Senate um, and will will become the majority leader or whatever again, right? The 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 king of the Republicans or however the fuck he wants to see himself. Um, and he is notorious for not even bringing bills up to vote. Like this is something that would help Americans on various different fronts. And this dude is like, nah, I'm not even going to look at it. I want to do a whole thing on McConnell. Uh, uh, that I want to get to 
uh, eventually I haven't done all the research and taken all my notes or anything like that. There's actually a decent NPR piece um, that covers a lot about Mitch McConnell. Uh, and I'm surprised because I'm not a huge NPR fan. Um, they're still a very corporatist news outlet. Uh, and I've been on NPR several times, but it's inter- they're, they're, every so often they kind of come out and they do something very interesting where I'm like, oh shit, you kind of, how did you get away with reporting this? Uh, essentially what the the GOP and the Senate are going to do by squashing the, a bill like this is perpetuate the war on drugs. They're going to perpetuate all the harm that it's done and they're going to prop up the pharmaceutical industry and make sure that people are addicted to pharmaceuticals rather than not. I mean, you know, it's you're you're not technically addicted to, you know, to to marijuana. Cannabis is not highly addictive. Um, it becomes a behavioral thing. But there's never been any records of cannabis addiction. There are other very addictive drugs out there. I'm not saying that they are there aren't. But really and I address this in a in a past stand-up special uh, called Approaching Happiness, but really what it boils down to, the reason why a lot of these, uh, these, these drugs like cannabis and a lot of psychedelics are not legalized or still considered to be dangerous, you know, gateway drugs that are going to fry your brain like an egg or whatever, uh, is because they don't want you to do those, they, those drugs. They want you to do their drugs. Right. They want you to take the drugs that they've spent all that money advertising and scaring you into taking. And they don't want you to do our drugs. All of those drugs are our drugs. Right. Those are drugs that that have proven to help physical and mental health issues. And uh, millions of people use them for depression, anxiety, PTSD, pain management. Uh, I think like uh, cannabis has also been used for seizure treatments um it's been used as a a a way to decrease cancer in certain cases um and the more we decriminalize it the more we're kind of realizing you know how beneficial cannabis is how beneficial psychedelics are and that goes into this next point it which is i don't think we have been respecting the drugs very well because we haven't given them the opportunity to be what they actually are meant to be used for right we've kind of demonized them to be this like oh only the fringes of society you have to be such a low and dirty person and and all of that all of that mentality is shifting in america um on 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 a global level right people don't look at marijuana users as these criminals and deviants and fucking they're all oh, they're blitzed out of their minds and they're gonna go and dig up corpses and eat their fl- like they don't people don't think that way anymore because people do those drugs and they're like this is not that bad my brain doesn't feel like it's being fried like an egg i don't have the need to jump off of uh, a roof you know this is not that bad. It feels good. It feels nice. Now, again, I brought this up in a in a prior live stream, which is if you're going to legalize the any and all drugs, which I think we should, there's an educational component that should come with that, meaning that you're going to have to teach people what these drugs do and how to use them properly, uh, kind of like what Portugal did in in their country, right? So, so decriminalizing is a step towards that. Uh, and and again, if you're if you're thinking as as the GOP usually does in terms of job creation, that's a whole in, the whole new industry that you've created, right? Is is drug management? Uh, you could like mobile methadone clinics exist in Portugal. There's no reason why they can't exist in America, and that creates more jobs uh, all around. So, you know, this would be an incredibly positive thing for for society. In reality, there is no reason why the GOP shouldn't approve this bill. Um, and the fear is that the next step is financial uh, 
security for you know dispensaries and places that sell cbd places that sell cannabis uh for medical purposes or recreational purposes too um you know they are unbanked and underbanked in this country and the next step if it's decriminalized on a federal level um that means that you're probably going to have to start taking it off schedule one you decriminalize it and you realize that there is medical uh, medical uses to it, right? That's what Schedule One is. Schedule One drugs mean that uh, there is absolutely no medical use for it at all, which is once again false because a lot of drugs have a medical purpose to them um, to treat pain, to treat anxiety, depression, PTSD, uh, seizures. We saw, right? Like you're you're using morphine, which is basically heroin. So how that clearly has a medical purpose, but heroin's still a schedule one drug. Once again, that goes down to they want you to do their drugs, not ours, right? You have opioids in our in our society. Purdue Pharmaceutical flooded um, flooded this country with opioids because they knew that they could. But once again, that's they want you to do their drugs, not our drugs. So uh, but like I said, this was a positive thing. It would it would mean that people's lives get better. You expunge the records. Now you can also start, you know, giving these dispensaries and giving this interest industry a little bit more financial stability, um, which is cool. And really, what this is a pushback on is big pharma and the prison industrial complex. So when the GOP and these six Democrats and the 38 people that didn't vote in uh, in the House, all the people that are against a bill like this are essentially toadies for the for big pharma and the prison industrial complex. I wouldn't be surprised of that at all. That industry, both those industries have a stranglehold in Congress. They they lobby. They put a lot of money into into those things. And how much do we really talk about safety and security of the American people in this in every election that comes around? We want to keep Americans safe. And one of the ways that they do that is by demonizing drugs. And then they have you know a majority of pharmaceutical companies. The reason why these pills are so expensive is because oh R and D R and D, which is primarily marketing and changing the color of a pill to you know keep their patents and all that sort of stuff. So, but regardless, you know I do think that this is a very positive step um, in 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 the discussion of uh, legalizing cannabis um, in our society. So I I'm I'm for this, and I hope I hope that you know these representatives that voted for it will push and try to lobby mitch mcconnell to put this on the floor and get a vote for it fingers crossed hey what's up everybody thank you guys so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed the content in this video make sure you like subscribe and share my content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here so make sure you like share and subscribe uh sign up for my email list uh and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that i put out there um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.